This paper was given to the American Physical Society March meeting in Baltimore in 2016. What is uncertainty? If Heisenberg's principle is an axiom, then quantum mechanics is not experimental. It's a mathematician's toy. By contrast, physical uncertainty is demonstrated by the stable wave packet and measured in classical wave mechanics. Dirac wrote that the wave packet is unstable, but this is a shortcut. The wave packet consists in a carrier wave inside a wave group and the two move at different velocities for a particle. You can see that some wave packets are stable from the following formula. Phi is a function of a space-time variable that is imaginary that causes phi to oscillate inside a symmetric envelope. This particular envelope is Gaussian with a coherence sigma, an important property. Phi is defined on the mean wave vector k and the mean angular frequency omega. These are each of them and both of them conserve physical quantities, making phi perfectly stable. We've written phi in terms of simplified units. Phi is a solution to the wave equation. The transverse wave is planar. But notice that in physics generally, the propagation direction is privileged. For example, in highly relativistic particles, the energy is given by Einstein's formula. But the transverse component is non-relativistic. E is equal to p squared over 2m, with px replacing the rest mass. Something similar happens in uncertainty, as we shall see. If you multiply phi by its complex conjugate, you get the probability distribution in time and space for finding a particle or photon. And then, if you take the space-free part by writing x equals zero, and taking a Fourier transform, you get the probability distribution for the angular frequency. The transform of a Gaussian is Gaussian and it's given on the left. From this we can define precisely the uncertainty in angular frequency. It's the full width half maximum and it's given on the right. And what is the uncertainty in time? It's given by the full width half maximum of this equation, given also on the right. If we multiply the two, we get an uncertainty principle in simplified units, which has an extraordinary property. Sigma cancels. This is universally assumed in quantum mechanics, but it's true only for Gaussian wave packets. We can generalize this uncertainty uncertainty by substituting with the derivative form of Planck's law and then we get an uncertainty principle which we can compare with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. It has six major differences and the first is that for the stable wave packet we have an equality where he has a limit. Secondly we have an arithmetic factor which is good to as many decimal places as you choose. Thirdly, we have a physical constant which is unburdened by the cross on Planck's constant denoting the denominator 2 pi. Fourthly, our uncertainty principle is valid for the propagation direction only. Fifthly, our uncertainty principle is an order of magnitude greater than Heisenberg's principle. Well, you might be tempted to say it's on the right side of his limit, so the two are consistent, but they're not consistent in the transverse plane. 
I can demonstrate this by dropping that weight packet through a fine slit. Before the packet reaches the slit, the transverse locational uncertainty is large, the transverse momentum is small. After the slit, the translational uncertainty is the slit width, W. And the translational momentum, well, according to Heisenberg's principle, it's equal to h crossed over 2w. This causes the wave packet to diverge, according to Heisenberg. But that's not what happens in fact. Fresnel knew a hundred years before the photon was quantized that the slit pinches the wave packet. The lateral uncertainty is, has an experimental value minus 3h which is far beyond Heisenberg's limit. It follows that Heisenberg's principle is an uncertain axiom in at least six ways. By contrast, physical uncertainty, which is defined in wave mechanics and quantization, is clear and precise, it's simple in deduction, and it's experimentally verified. Well, what about quantum mechanics? If a packet is Gaussian, that is, if the distribution is normal, sigma cancels, as we saw. Its quantum mechanical uncertainty and its commutators are approximately good. But if its source is non-Gaussian, if it's relativistic, if it's pulsed, if it's chopped, then derivatives on the envelope complicate the equation. And, f and it follows that either computations are erroneous or every distribution is normal in some unwritten quantization theory. But there are added confusions. Do operators work on only half the wave function and not on the envelope part? Does the envelope belong in Heisenberg's commutator, which I call the jitterbug equation, for the following reason? One of the simplest things you can do with a stable wave packet is to operate on it with the Klein-Gordon equation, the relativistic version for a free particle in zero field. And the result is an algebraic equation in second order. You can derive this equation in other ways too. But it has a very important property if you differentiate it, a property new to relativity. Omega divided by k is the phase velocity, and d omega by dk is the group velocity. And the product of the phase velocity and the group velocity is equal to c squared. This equation has three velocities. If you want a jitterbug, you can get a very big prize. But if you want to do physics, you need to know which one you are calculating. Let's map them. The group velocity is well behaved. It tends to zero at low k. It tends to c at high k. c is a physical constant. It is the speed of light. And beyond c is the phase velocity. It tends to infinity in the rest frame it tends to C at high K. Can you measure it? Yes, of course. It's the inverse of the group velocity. It's also the ratio of energy over momentum. And it has some intriguing properties. Time is Newtonian in the rest frame, but only within the coherence sigma. And it answers an ancient problem in physics, action to distance. And in particular, how does the wave packet get reduced during quantum measurement without breaking the rules of relativity? There are other things too you can derive from the algebraic equation. One is the equation for the electron, as Dirac uh, described. He also found a negative eigenvalue which he gave to the positron. Well, 
if the eigenvalue is negative. The rest mass must be negative, because in the rest frame, that's what the energy is. And if the rest mass is negative, the wave vector must be negative, for reasons that I showed at the Denver March meeting two years ago. And if the wave vector is negative, the angular frequency must be negative. Otherwise, the particle self-annihilates and breaks conservation rules. If you think about it, the angular frequency is negative. Of course, the eigenvalue is negative. And so we have a new solution for the antiparticle. E, M, omega and K are negative. The group velocity and phase velocity are both positive. The antiparticle is left-handed, unlike the right-handed electron. And in particular, K is antiparticle is antiparallel to the group velocity. Do you remember the Feynman diagrams with time going upwards? The antiparticle has a reversed arrow. This is because the symmetries in annihilation creation depend on the negative wave vector k. But when you look in the laboratory at the positive group velocity, you find antiparticles travelling forward in time, not backwards in time, as in the Feynman's Tuckerberg principle. You can derive other properties from this representation, including annihilation and creation dynamics, which I only have time to mention. I do not have time to mention a great many other applications of the stable wave packet. But my conclusion is that physics is many-sided, where you don't need to formally quantize. Classical methods are transparent and physical. The stable wave packet provides physical quantized solutions, overcoming complications in the quantum mechanics of particles. Not only in uncertainty, or topology, or velocity, or localization but also in quantization in standing waves and boson pairs. But you may notice that in bound systems, such as the harmonic oscillator and atomic wave functions, the quantum mechanical solutions are approximately right. 